Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an episode of Tank Talks Movies. In this particular episode I will be talking about... Do you, do you remember the first time that you tasted pie? American Pie. This is a really good, like, sex comedy from back in the early 90s. And it's, like, one of the best ones I've seen in a long, long time. There, there are multiple sequels of this movie, but it's just... The original is the best. The movie starts off with Jim. He's trying to watch a porn channel, but it's all glitchy. Like he was trying to watch Skinamax or something, but they, they don't get the channel. So, his mom comes in, tries to, to say goodnight. He's trying to change the channel, but the remote's not working. He goes, she goes, something wrong with the asset? And say, yeah. is there something wrong with the asset? Yeah, I can't say it right now for some reason. Something wrong with the channel? Yeah, re reception. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I'm trying to watch this nature show, and it's, you know, it's not coming in. It's all glitchy. His dad walks in, and his, his mom trying to calls him out on I think he's trying to watch one of these illegal channels. Illegal, illegal channels, Jim goes. And his dad goes, no, this is bad reception, honey. Then all of a sudden, a line comes in. The line says, spank my hairy ass. So, okay, you know, then he, like, moves, uh. Moves the pillow that was covering his crotch. He just, you know, his dad moves the pillow and he's, they see that he has a tube sock on his dong. And, uh, that's how the movie starts and then the title comes American Pie. And then there's, we get, meet, meet the other cast members, um, Kevin, Kevin and Vicky. They're like, they're, they're somewhat of the popular kids, but not really. And, you know, they're, they're in a relationship, but Kevin wants to have sex. Vicky's not sure if she's ready to have sex. You know, it's just one of those types of deals. And, but she will give her, give him hand jobs and blow jobs and stuff like that. Then we get meet Oz and Stifler. Chris Ozstriker and Steve Stifler. They're like your usual jocks, but Chris Oddstriker is just like one of the nicest guys, and Steve Stifler is just the biggest douchebag you'll ever see in your life. You know, but they're on the lacrosse team together, and they're pretty good friends. They go to Stifler's party, and, well, they're trying to s explain how... Oz is going to try to get, get laid tonight because he's going on a date with a college chick. And <laughs> I wonder how many times somebody said this line. He's, they're in a, they're in a car, they're at like pretty much a makeout point or some shit like that. And they're just doing their thing, you know, talking, all this stuff. And then he just blows it by saying, Suck me, beautiful. I wonder how many times P kids, after seeing that movie, were constantly saying that. Suck me, beautiful. But he kind of, she just kind of laughs at him. You know, you're not going to get a girl saying cheesy lines like that, etc., etc. And you know, try to become more sensitive. See what she wants to do. You know, instead of you, the dude, trying to get into the pants right away. So, Oz goes back to the party. Jim is there talking to Kevin and Vicky. He's so nervous because the foreign exchange student, Nadia, is there. And he has the biggest fucking crush on her. So, Kevin and Vicky tell him to go and talk to him. I mean, talk to her. She's a, he goes up. Tries to talk and just starts breaking out laughing. There's a little side character named Sherman. He's 
kind of the weird jerk character. The nerdy jerk character. He... He's like, he acts like the Terminator. He's the fist of the... F yeah. He's a sex robot from the future to change the past for one lucky lady. So, he starts talking to this one girl and tells, like, um, Jim and Kevin, you know, you need to catch up. I got a little thing going on. Now we have Paul. Let me talk, talk about Paul Finch here for a moment. He's like, kind of the, he's the oddball. Jim is the biggest oddball out of the group. But he's just, he kind of has confidence in himself, but he also has, like, doubts. He, okay, he pays a friend of Vicky's named Jessica to tell the whole school that he had sex with an older woman. He's got a tattoo with a big eagle coming through the fire and some stuff like that. And, like, all this stuff. All this, like, pie. Thing to make him the top dog of the school. And none of it's fucking real. Yeah. St okay, Stifler. I mean, Oz joins the jazz choir. And he meets out them. He meets Heather. Like, you know, they're, they're kind of... He's kind of titty. At first, because, you know... <laughs> You know, trying to learn all these songs and stuff. And Heather's like really nice to him and he's really nice to Heather. They're actually, to my opinion, they're like the cutest couple in the entire movie. Okay, so, you know, they, they make a pact saying that they need to have sex before they graduate. So, they're all going to try to get laid at prom. Yeah, so... Like, all of them are just doing their thing. And, like, you know, Kevin has Vic. Kevin has Vicky. Um, Chris has, Oz has Heather. Jim is about, like, doesn't have anyone. But then Nadia asks him if he could help him, help her with her like homework stuff. You know, if she could come over to his place some afternoon, and like, but she has volleyball practice, so she'd come over and she could change at his place, and then they could study. <laughs> okay, film her changing webcams, folks. <laughs> oh god okay Nadia comes over to the gym's place starts undressing Jim runs all the way to Kevin's house him and Finch are sitting at Kevin's computer she, watching Nadia change Stifler's at his place watching Nadia change with his younger brother and the link got sent out to like half the town. So half the town is watching um, Nadia change and pleasure herself to uh, some of Jen's adult magazines. So they they tell Jim to go back over the ask if she could use an extra hand, etc., etc., etc. So Jim comes over. Come, go, goes back home and goes just stands in front of the door like praying to God please let this be it come on come on he gets in he goes she's pretty much startled by Jim coming into the room while she's pleasuring herself but people <coughs> people are viewing and Jim knows this he's on the, like so Nadia wants him to strip so like, so Nadia turns on the radio, has, like, music playing, and can have Jim just, like, dancing, you know, taking his clothes off and all that silliness. And 
he ends up taking his shirt off, swinging it, and making it land on the webcam, and people are all, like, confused what the fuck's going on because they thought they lost a link or something. Then the shirt just slips off the camera, and... <sighs> then, you know, they start making out a little bit. Jim just gets his leg rubbed by Nadia, and then all of a sudden he does... I'm going to try my best, but <laughs> just to reenact this. It's like, oh, 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 oh. So, he comes, and then he, he's trying to keep Nadia to stay, but, you know, he's pulling out the porn, he's looking at it, telling, him, telling her she's more beautiful than any of these women in these magazines. Okay. She ends up taking her panties off, and he gets to touch her vagina, and then all of a sudden he does. He comes again. Twice. How is that physically fucking possible to come twice? But just think. That scene is probably one of the funniest scenes in the entire movie. Besides Jim sicking his dick in a pie. What the fuck about that scene? But, back to me talking about the movie. Nadia gets sent back to wherever she was from. Uh, Jim's all the saddened that, you know, he doesn't, he thought he had a good chance with Nadia. Didn't really work out because, well, he's a, Two, two push pony, I believe, and then he's he meets his meets this girl named Michelle, and Michelle is just the normal band bandy, a band geek, pretty much just. She likes to be in the band. She's always telling stories like one time in band camp, you know. But, you know, I, I'm not going to keep saying that because that's going to get annoying as fuck. But, you know, she's just selling stories about her in band camp. And then Jim's like, you don't understand why I'm upset, right? She's like, no, is it because we have a test? Because I always get a little cranky, upset when I have to take a big test. And uh, Jim just asked her to prom, you know. She goes, yeah. You'll really take me? We'll go to Steve Stifler's party afterwards? Yeah. Yeah, all, all the do, all the things, you know, just... And... Now we have a montage of everyone just buying suits and stuff like that, getting ready. And Jim has the goofiest looking fucking suit that he has to wear. Everyone's like black and white, you know, just like gray, etc. All the girls looked really pretty. And just the prom scene, I always enjoyed prom. Even even when I was younger, I always I didn't mind going to it. Taking dates to my prom was fun. And it's just, you know, it's like a way of passage. You know, you gotta... People think you have to have sex on prom night. Yeah, you can. It's up to you. But, you know, what if the girl's not ready? What if the guy's not ready? You don't need to always have sex. But, it's always a good thing to, you know, always fun to at least have it every now and then. But, you know, they're dancing and all that stuff, and, you know, the normal prom stuff. Surprise no one's, I don't think anyone spiked the punch while I was done at the fucking prom. So, prom's all over, Kevin's all, like, saying, alright guys, are we ready to do this, you know, can we... You know, make up, we made this pact, we can't leave it. <clears throat> Saying all this stuff like, why, are you, Kevin, are you afraid to have sex or something? What, yeah, that's the deal. Like, you know, he's just like, we can't back out on this. I'm like, and Jim's like, you know what, I've been so fucking stressed out about sex, I haven't even had it yet, and I already hate, fucking hate sex. <sighs> Line from the movie. And while Finch, <laughs> he doesn't got a date, because... You know, all the lies and rumors and shit got to him, like, 
came up and bit him in the ass when Siffler made a put like some X lax stuff in his uh, mochaccino, and he's just he had an issue with shitting in the school. He ends up going to the bathroom in the women's room and just <laughs> excrement, you know, just terrible smell. And a bunch of uh, the students come and see him. He's all embarrassed and just like everyone knows it was all a sham and shit like that. And so he's dateless now. And that's okay. Stifler has a date with a girl that pretty much was... Trying to hold out for Finch, but after the shit show he literally put on in the women's room, yeah, no one really wanted to date him, take him to the prom. And so, Jim has a date, Kevin has a date, Oz has a date, Stifler has a date, and Sherman has a date. Sherman the, has the date with the girl he had sex with at Stifler's party. So... Vicky is talking to the girl that Finch, no not Finch, Sherman hooked up with, you know, at the prom, and they're all doing, you know, having a conversation. We had one of those long romantic talks, so that's what you call it? What, what would I call it? So the band stops and has a break for a while, and she walks up on stage, and she pretty much tells the truth. Sherman never had sex with. She never had sex with Sherman. He tried to fuck a grapefruit once, and when he comes, he cries. And when sometimes when he gets really nervous, he pisses himself. So pretty much he pisses himself. And Finch, Jim, and Oz go out to find Kevin, and he's just sitting. He's all saddened because you know. The guys pretty much told him off because he's got, he's like, you know, they're all fed up with all this bull crap. But they told told them that Sherman didn't have sex with, didn't get laid, and he pissed himself. He's like, so now they're getting ready to go to uh, Stifler's party after prom party. So they're going around, like, collecting stuff, you know, getting their bags ready, grabbing the dates, getting ready to go. So, Vicky and Kevin find a room. They're ready to get romantic and, you know, do all that stuff. Vic, Vicky opens up a door and here's Stifler's little brother. You guys are gonna fuck, aren't you? Fuckers, 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 fuckers! Get out. Oh, man. You know, etc. But I digress. You know, they go. They get, you know, pretty much get naked. And then they get ready to do things. Then we cut to Oz and Heather walking around. And she's pretty much telling, telling Heather about the, the pack that the guys made. And prom night was supposed to be the night, the night that they all have sex. And Heather's like, well, this is not the right way to tell me this. And then she, he tells... He <clears throat> tells him why he left the lacrosse game to go and sing with the choir. Because the coach was saying, you're not... Don't you ever think that you're ever going to score. You score until you score. And, you know, it's still making it uncomfortable. But, you know, they end up becoming boyfriend and girlfriend. And it's a really, out of those, those all the entire group, it's out of those two that make, I think, is the sweetest couple. So, they're just, you know, foreplaying, you know, all this stuff. Kevin and Victoria are just fucking already, or at least... Trying to, you know, I'm just a normal missionary. So, uh, uh. Yeah. So, Jim and Michelle are, you know, just sitting around drinking. And, you know, and they're just saying, like, she 
and then she played spin the bottle and she had to kiss some nerdy guy on the lips everyone was laughing at her and you know but she didn't care because it was so funny so and then one time she goes one time at band camp I stuck a boot in my pussy and Jim's just taking a drip oh, like you know the spray the spray spit type deal and uh, then she goes yeah um are we gonna screw soon because I'm getting a little antsy so we f pretty much find a kids room to just have sex in so Jim pretty much runs hops onto the bed bounces off of it just like boing boing and he's getting ready and then you know Michelle's like well we're two rubbers because it'll desensitize you I saw you on the web you're you're a sure thing <laughs> You'll come, it won't make him come so goddamn soon. So, not, but, you know, you can barely feel it when you're wearing one fucking condom. Two would probably, you know, give you zero pleasure for the guy. But, you know, they, they start making out and all that stuff. And Michelle just says the funniest fucking line ever. Say my name. Huh? Say my name, bitch. Michelle, Michelle, <laughs> you know, like, like breaking stuff, and, you know, you know, it just cuts to the next day, oh wait, I'm sorry, Finch is wandering around the, like, the cabin, or the lake house, and they're just doing their thing, he's doing this thing, just wandering around the lake house, and all of a sudden, he sees a room with, like, please keep out. Apparently, he doesn't really listen very well, because he opens up the door, and he's, like, just looking around, and he's like, it's a room with a pool table. And he meets, um, Stifler's mom. Milf. Milf, milf, milf. Yeah, so... She starts talking with Finch, and they're starting to drink, like, booze. So, and she asks, Finch asks her, Would you be upset with me if I said you were ravish, ravishing? She, so, they, apparently they just fuck on a pool table. And Stifler, uh, they cut to the next morning where everyone's still, like, there's a really romantic scene where... They're, Chris and Heather are like wrapped up in a blanket and you know, they're just holding each other close and like, like a, I would be that, that person. And then you see like Vicky and uh, Kevin, you know, he's like, you know, we had our senior prom and then pretty much, you know, them going to do two different colleges. Pretty much admitting that they're, it's not going to work out, so technically they break up at the end of the movie. That's okay. <sighs> Jim wakes up and he's going to, he thinks she, Michelle's still there. She, he goes to like, you know, do a cuddle and... He ends up wrapping himself up with a inflated dinosaur. <laughs> He's like, oh my god. She used me. I was used. <laughs> I was used, yeah! Alright. Then all of a sudden Stifler's like wondering why, the, why is this door locked? You know, they shoved a, door, a chair against the door so nobody would interrupt Finch and his Stifler's mom. Mom? Shipwreck? Yeah, so Stifler sees that Finch and his mom were together and he pretty much just faints. He faints. That's all he can say. He fucking fainted. And then the guys are all at dog ears. And they're, they're just having hot dogs, drinking soda pop, etc., etc. Till the next step, like, 
after like after high school, you know. And you know, it's a really good movie. I recommend this movie if you've never seen it. But who the hell hasn't seen it? Besides my associate Proto Met, aka Lucas Hittestorf. You are weird. You haven't seen this freaking movie. Okay. I really recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. And then I recommend all its sequels. They're not as good as this one, but American Reunion is pretty damn close. Okay. Thank you for watching. Please tell your friends about my channel, Tanks World. And please like, subscribe, and comment to my videos. And I will, in the mid-future, I will be doing the sequels to American Pie. So, and again, stay clean, stay calm, and everyone have a good time. So, I'm signing off. Peace.